Welcome back to the next video in our series of installing Debian Bookworm, which will eventually be Debian 12. This is a testing version. So some things that may or may not be uh, stable are uh, working correctly. So I'm going to install it on this old uh, laptop. As you can see, it's kind of beaten up. And here's that CD that we created. And let's go ahead and boot up the computer. And you may hear some uh, humming noises. That is the computer's fan. It is, for some reason, 70 degrees in my office in January. Okay, so we're going to go with the graphical install. We are not going to be installing the uh, X-Windows graphical user interface, uh, mainly because the first time I tried to make this video, uh, it kept failing. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the base system and SSH in this video, and then we're going to go ahead and see how to set up everything to install uh, the graphical user interface, which we'll use GNOME or GNOME in the uh, future videos. Okay, this says Debian 11 still, just because Debian 12 is not out, so everything still will say Debian 11. And we are going to install English, but install the language of your that you are native with or that you choose and the country that you are from. I'm going to do American English for the uh, key map. And it's going to detect the hardware. And scan the uh, CD. It's loading any drivers that it's going to need for the installation process. Okay, I'm going to go with wired or uh, the Ethernet rather than wireless. Okay, and what are we going to call this host name? We'll call it samples and test. Uh, we're not going to put a domain. Okay, it wants a root password. I'm going to just put a temporary password on. I'll be changing this uh, later. Just something to get through this uh, video. Okay, full name of the user. Again, we'll go with samples and tests and this is a the T is missing on this keyboard so that's why I got that samples that looks like a good username and a password for that okay we're gonna go with Eastern time And I'm going to manually set up the drive. Okay, so this is the drive that we want to set up. So I'm going to create a new partition. I'm going to make this 470 gigs for the primary partition. Or 470.1. And that's going to be the primary. I'm going to put it at the beginning of the drive. Okay, yeah, we're going to go with uh, the ext4 file system and the. Yeah. So we're done setting up this. And now we still have 30 gigs left. And we're going to create a new uh, partition. We're going to use the full space. It's 
going to be a uh, logical and we're going to go with making this the swap area. So we're going to have 30 gigs worth of swap and we're finished setting this up. You can partition it however you want. If you want to make a separate user space, uh, you can do that. I'm just going to keep all the data on one drive just to make all this easier. Yep, that's what we want to do. So we're going to write that to disk. Now, if you didn't want to make a swap partition, you can, I believe, create a swap file on the primary drive. Um, I say I believe because I have not actually done that on a Linux uh, system in several years, so I don't know if that's still a thing. I don't see why it wouldn't be. But if you want me to test that out, let me know. Okay, so it's uh, loading the base system. I'm probably going to either uh, speed this up or uh, skip over this so you don't need to watch a bunch of files being copied. Okay, so now we'd uh, want to know if we have a... Uh, another disk so this is the only uh disk if um possibly installed this from uh on a smaller media such as a uh cd you could uh have this but the dvd was just one iso one file one disk so let's continue Gonna continue configuring. Okay, we're gonna go uh, install the or set up a mirror. Okay, again we are in the United States, and we are gonna use deb .org. Yeah, we don't have a proxy. Okay, it, we're going to uh, allow the package usage survey. Again, this is a, a testing uh, system, so might as well uh, give as much feedback as we can. Okay, so we're not going to install currently the desktop environment or GNOME. We're going to install the standard system utilities and I'm going to install the SSH just so uh, we can log in uh, from a remote location. If I want to just put this uh, laptop on the side to work on and just uh, access it remotely through my network. The graphical user interface will do in a later video uh like i said earlier it failed to install when i did that as you can see this is installing 151 uh files the with the graphical user interface and gnome it was almost 10 times that so this is should take a uh, less time um right now i'm at 22 minutes of this process this video should be a lot uh, shorter for you once I edit it so you don't need to see all this stuff okay so we're going to install the grub bootloader this will uh, allow uh, Linux to boot from the hard drive and if you've used previous versions of Linux in the past way in the past at this point you may have used uh, Lilo the Linux loader um, and we're going to boot from 
SDA, or we're going to put the bootloader on SDA. In theory, you can have this so you would boot from a different device um, for whatever reason. Uh, if you want me to explore that, please uh, leave a comment. Okay, so it ejected the CD. So now let's go ahead and reboot and see if this worked. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and log in. And let's uh, do a quick uh, test. And sudo is not found. So I found that interesting that that is not installed. And we're going to have to do some other uh, changes in the next video to use on um, APT. So in the next video, I'll log in as root. And we're going to go ahead and install some new packages and update the system as a whole. If there's anything you want me to do uh, in this process, any particular utility or anything like that that you want me to test, let me know. And you have a great day.